welcome to another episode of Fearless TV. I'm here with the talented, gorgeous Sarah Collier. She is an incredible singer of many genres, jazz, blues, rock, pop, you name it. But she's also an incredible teacher and a yoga teacher. And she's come up with an ingenious idea, I think, of combining singing with yoga. Hey, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> so can you take us back to the very beginning? How did you discover yoga? Um, I, I've been doing yoga on and off for my whole life, really, even before I knew it was called yoga um, as a kid, I guess. Um, but um, And then I lived in Melbourne for a number of years and had a really good, there was a really good yoga studio there. Um, where they even had ropes on the walls and you could hang upside down. That was pretty cool. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I kind of got majorly into it after 2014 when I had glandular fever, um, which didn't seem to want to go. Um, and I couldn't do much at all. Um, but I eventually found my way back to yoga and found a really good studio. It was really, um, perfect and I started going five mornings a week and then I thought I really want to know more and so I went and did my yoga teacher training. Nice. So. And were, were you singing professionally at the time that you had glandular fever? Yeah, um, so it was pretty bad. It's the only time I've ever had to cancel gigs and get subs in and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, I've never been so sick. Yeah, it's not a, yeah. When you're a singer and you rely on, you know, gigs for income and and also it's our passion. It's what we love to do when we, we can't yeah. sing because we're so fatigued or um, sick. It's just, it's a horrible experience. So yoga helped you really, I guess, discover your wellness again and... Yeah, you know, I mean, it's... Your voice? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a full body kind of mind thing, mm. so... Um, just calming down the nervous system, really. Um, I think that's what yoga does really, really well is through that slow breathing and exercise and stretching um, just settles the nervous system a little bit and that, that seems to be one of the main problems with glandular fever is that everything just goes a little bit haywire. So um, getting my health back again, helping get my voice back again, so... Yeah. And specifically, what are the benefits? I know yoga obviously will benefit every single person, um, but particularly for singers. So you did mention obviously calming the nervous system, but m even on a more physical level, uh, what are the benefits of, of doing yoga for singing? The main thing on a physical level is getting rid of extra tension in the body. So we're, we're all pretty... Um, aware of tension in the throat when we're a singer um, and and maybe shoulders and, and neck uh, but the whole singing is such a whole body thing that you if you've got tension in some part of your body it's going to relate through back to your voice it, it's not um, you know it's not kind of rocket science but then it's also um, it doesn't seem to be talked about that much that the whole body needs to be functioning really well and so through stretching and strengthening the body uh, in yoga and just freeing up and um, on top of that just becoming more aware of your body mm -hmm. and you might not know that you constantly you know do this with your shoulder or something <laughs> um, when you sing and um, yoga kind of starts to bring that awareness to to yourself and to your body and so you can start getting rid of any habits that are getting in the way of a free sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to say, I really, really loved the class on Monday. So I actually did the class. And, yeah, just just using the voice through movement, it's such a freeing experience, um, particularly in some of those poses and, and singing on the vowels. Uh, so why, why would we sing on the vowels in those? Yeah, so we do a lot of work on the vowels and... Yeah. and I felt the need to explain myself about that in my in the PhD research class. And, um, that that's that's the belly of the sound. That's the core of the sound is is found there in the in the vowel sounds. Um, and 
you know, it's it's great to work with consonants and stuff like that, but really our pure airflow is happening uh, with vowels. There's, you know, unstructured airflow, um, and that's where we can really, um, you know, work on the quality of the voice through um, the air pressure, airflow, um, and then how you're using your your mouth and and the um, the vocal tract and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I would call the the way we use the mouth the embouchure. In because yeah. I used to play saxophone and we say you know that's your embouchure and and what's it doing, but it's kind of similar in singing, right? What are you doing with your mouth? Yeah. <laughs> that's where it's leaving from. Um, yeah. So yeah, so working on the vowel is is really working on the breath. Those two mm. things together. Mm. And I noticed too, because I um, I'm still working on my uh, chest voice sound. So like being able to sing, you know, below a middle C and sustain it. But I felt like I could actually feel my larynx just drop, you know, because it was so yeah relaxed. Um, and I was singing notes that I normally wouldn't be able to sing. So <laughs> it was really cool. And the other thing I really liked was the focusing on the candle. Can you talk us through? That exercise? Yeah. Um, so candle gazing or trataka, um, trataka, trataka, um, is a really ancient exercise, um, and it's all about focusing the mind. I mean, you're focusing the, the eyes on the candle, yeah. um, so that's a very easy thing to go um, to have a, an object to focus on, and a candle is just a, a beautiful thing. Uh, and a beautiful kind of symbol of life, I think, fire. Um, so then we, we're focusing the mind through that, that focus and that's that's where that whole practice comes from. Is um, It's really kind of a meditation with an object. So you're really working on getting that one-pointed mind focus. Um, and that kind of translates to singing in, you know, focusing when you're performing, focusing when you're practicing. Uh, and and I don't think we can probably have too much focus, you know. Yeah. No, because I I know, you know, from my own experience, I get quite affected by sound. So if, if I'm in a restaurant, for instance, and, you know, there's loud talking over that way, there's plates or glasses chinking over that, that side, it can actually put me off what I'm doing. Um, and the same goes with, you know, that critical mind that you know assesses people's you know faces to get some kind of feedback if you're doing okay so if someone's looking a bit surly you know you think oh no I'm doing a really bad job so I can imagine this this exercise would really help with just yeah. quieting down that aspect of the mind and really focusing on the task at hand have you yeah. noticed have you noticed an improvement since you've been doing it in your own practice yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it's it's interesting because people who you see me seeing have commented, "Oh, you just you know, there's all this stuff going on. You just got up there and sang, so much focus." And I just think, "Ah, yeah, it's working. It's good." Get a candle, <laughs> mate. You'll be right. <laughs> and the the singing into the candle, I really enjoyed that. It was really uh, funny because there was a room full of jazz singers so Sarah got us to um, sing blue skies into the candle <laughs> blue skies <laughs> so what was the what's the the idea of singing into the candle um still on the same idea of focusing the mind and focusing mm -hmm. your concentration mm -hmm. uh, but then adding the voice to it um we bring the element of breath in mm -hmm. and so Often in singing and teaching, we talk about focusing the voice to a point in mm -hmm. front of you, mm -hmm. uh, which which somehow miraculously helps the sound. I think it's to do with really having a powerful stream of air that's kind of directed at a point. It's not just kind of falling out. Oh. It's, 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 oh. <laughs> it's oh, like a, that like so. <laughs> My Tourette's. <laughs> um, and that, I think that's, it's got to be an air pressure thing. You know, you, you've got this point, you're focusing on it, and the air pressure is much better than air pressure if you were not not focusing. So singing to the candle, um, bringing in the, the element of mind focus, but then bringing in the element of breath focus. I mean, we're not trying to blow the candle out either. No. <laughs> so, that's true. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah, the mind and the voice and the breath all together focused. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to somebody who is a beginner um, at yoga? Um, I know I've, I've been to numerous classes over the years, very sporadically, so I feel like I'm always a novice each time that I come in. And I also feel like, I guess, you know, a little bit clunky and, you know, uncoordinated. So what would you say to someone like, you know, myself, although I, I plan to become, a, you know, seasoned, I'll try to get to at least three in a row. Um, yeah, someone who's a beginner at, at yoga, but also a beginner at singing. So there might, might be people out there who go, yeah, this sounds interesting, but, you know, I'm not much of a yogi and I'm not much of a singer. So, yeah, what would you say to the beginner? Um, well, starting with the, the yoga beginner idea, mm. um, it's, we've just got this crazy idea in our society at the moment um, that you have to be this perfect pretzel um, to perfect look at the pretzel. That could be my yoga studio now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the imperfect pretzel. The imperfect pretzel. <laughs> Can anyway. you just like copyright C, that Sarah's <laughs> right now? Okay. Um, so you don't have to be super flexible. You don't have to um, have a certain body shape. Um, you just have to be breathing, which is good, you know. <laughs> we can all do that. Really help. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's going to get you to the, the yoga studio. Um, and that's all you need is you don't need to be super fit, super flexible, or have the right clothes that are, you know, ninety dollars for a pair of leggings. It's just ridiculous, but that's a that's an aside. Um, so to just let go of any idea that you're being judged on what you look like, yeah. um, then also to let go of judging yourself as, as you know as much as you can possibly let that go and, and go. Yoga's for everybody, mm -hmm. and um, it's. Oh, that's so cliche, but it is no, a journey. No, it, it is, and it's funny because I think, yeah, I think that idea comes from social media like Instagram and, you know, these perfectly created pictures of very slim, yeah. you know, people doing these amazing um, moves on a beach yeah. that looks yeah. really exotic, <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, that we feel like we need to fit into that mould in order to, you know, or to be of that standard of, you know, capability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many, I mean, there's so many things I can't do in yoga that I, maybe one day after years of practice, I'll be able to, um, you know, do particular things that I see people doing that I think, wow, it's amazing. But it's, it's so not the point at all mm. of yoga. Yeah. Um, it's not about being able to do some crazy handstand on one hand while you, I don't know, support your friend when you're on the leg or something. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that's acrobatics and that's um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, yoga is really about the breath. Um, so if you're doing a yoga class and there's no attention paying to breathing, it's not, I don't think it's yoga. Mm. Um, it's um, that's interesting. Like exercise thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's for everyone and it's exploring your body, exploring your yeah. own body. And yeah, being becoming, uh, well, learning the skills of mindfulness and um, yeah. yeah, not comparing yourself uh, where you're at with other people. I think that's a common mistake. You know, you yeah. get there and see all these incredible um, figures doing these amazing moves or just being able to look graceful while they're doing even the basic moves, you know. Um, yeah. But being able to just accept where you're at and um, yeah. yeah and just and get the most out of it for yourself and in terms of this the beginner singer as well yeah. um it's so so similar mm. um the, the letting go of the judgment of yourself but then letting go of the idea that other people are judging you too or mm. or if they or if someone does seem to be just being able to let that go and then realize that it's it's not about anyone else it's just about yourself yeah um and there's always things to work on like we can all improve our pitch and we can all improve our breath management breath flow or phrasing or i mean there's so many things that we're always 
all working yeah. on it, no matter whether you're a beginner or you're a professional. Yeah. Uh, and so just just understanding where you're at and yeah. um, and you know taking on information and trying things out and and being kind to yourself. Yeah, that's it. That's what it comes back to. Like, there's a lot of incredible life lessons just in this alone. So, you know, being kind to yourself. There's so yeah. much power in that and letting go and, yeah, letting go of, of judgment, letting go of tension. It's all yeah. interrelated. And yeah. it's something to aspire to on a daily basis. And I guess yoga is just, it's a practice of all of those things, you know, through movement yeah. and, and now because you've added the singing component to it through sound, so movement and sound. Yeah, and sound is vibration, so yep. it's, um, it's interesting that you were talking about getting into your chest voice more mm. um, in, the, in the classes. I mean, that's where I live, in that, in that area of my voice, <laughs> um, so that's my bias. But, but that would be something to notice is that, that feeling that you get, the, I mean, the, the vibration of the sound as yeah. well yeah. Um, that you get from singing in your chest voice. It'd be interesting to notice how that feels different. Um, but then, of course, we're in a, a whole room, uh, a room full of other singers, um, and then you're, you're getting the, the vibration of their sound as well. Yeah. Something it, very cool And it feels that. really healing, you know. I know that that word gets thrown around a lot, but it actually <laughs> does. You know, when you're singing with other feels good. voices, it feels amazing. And I... And, you know, obviously there are hormones being released because you you are singing for one and you're singing in a group. Um, so there's just so many benefits to, to a class. I have to say also that I really enjoyed the uh, improvisation that we did. So we were walking around mindfully and um, taking turns. So do you want to talk through yeah, that? Yeah, I've known that passing the phrase so... Um, it's a call and response where we walk around mindfully and um, I'll start off with uh, an improvised phrase and then everyone repeats that and then the next person in, in the circle, we're usually walking around in the circle around the yoga room, um, comes up with their phrase and then we all repeat that and we just keep passing it around. Um, so it's a bit of ensemble kind of listening listening work, yeah. um, which is good. We all That's always good to work on. Um, but it also just feels good to, to get into your body and, and not just be in your head thinking, oh, what am I going to sing? And if I've ever been in like a group sort of workshop setting before and I've always felt, oh, no, shit, what am I going to sing if it came around to my turn, if we're doing one of those improvisation exercises. But mm. in this instance, because we're so present and it's really not about, oh, it's not really about what comes out. It's like just no. keeping that flow going and listening and enjoying the feeling of it all I, I found that quite inspiring yeah it takes all the pressure out i think there's just so much pressure to be like there's pressure to look perfect there's all the pressure to, to sound perfect and come up with the most amazing phrase and yeah. <laughs> like just uh we forget i think to enjoy just enjoy making sound yeah yeah that's it well, I have to say, um, I, I love the class. I really, really did. And I, I mentioned to you earlier that I literally, oh, can I use this word? I, I'm going to use it. I was so munted when I walked in. I was being a real munt, if you can make that a noun. Because it was raining really heavy and I um, just finished teaching and it was a real rush to get over the bridge. And it was, yeah, the traffic was insane. So I walked in really, really irritated and just left like, yeah, just feeling like that scene in The Sound of Music, Maria on the Mountaintop. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it was, it was, oh, I can't tell you enough how much I enjoyed it. Perfect. Yeah, so do you want to um, tell everybody how they can find out more about you, your work? So. Sarah doesn't only just teach yoga, she teaches singing. Uh, you can see her perform around Brisbane and she has got one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard. No worries, mate. <laughs> just telling the bloody truth. So anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it to you now. So we have a yoga class for singers every Monday night mm -hmm. uh, in the city. But just P.S. everybody is a singer. There you go. 
Yeah. Thing. Um, now. Happening to my I've got a frog. Um, six thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Monday evening, except public holidays, um, in the in Albert Street in the city, and um, you can find my stuff on Facebook. Uh, created a new page called Breathe Body, Mind, and Voice, um, and. At the moment, the only class we're doing is that Monday night yoga for singers class, but I'm hoping that kind of can branch out to other things. So um, you can go on there and find my link to vocal exercises on SoundCloud and stuff like that. Um, but down the track, I'd really like to do retreats. So we're kind oh, of doing... Oh, yeah. And I was thinking too, online courses. Yeah. That would be uh, awesome. You're the queen of all the... I'm, I'm a bit of a techno <laughs> so. A dinosaur. <laughs> You're using Skype now, so that's... You know, I know. Yeah. This wonderful... <laughs> QC drop. Oh, that's excellent. Well, I'll, I'll put all the links below anyway. Cool. So, yeah, thank you so much for having a chat with us. Thanks. And like I said, I can't recommend Sarah's class enough. If you are a singer, I think it's extremely beneficial. And if you don't identify as a singer, it's still going to be fun and light and, yeah, you'll literally leave happier <laughs> when you first walk in. And if you're already happy, just think a thousand <laughs> times happy. <Yeah. laughs> Nirvana. <laughs> cool. All Thank right. You. Thank Thanks, you. Sarah. <laughs> Feel the singer